Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have my July favorites and I'm going to jump right in because I do have quite a few products. First favorite was the Morphe 9N palette. If you guys are familiar with Morphe blush palettes, they had a 9B or they have a 9B palette, but then they released this one. This is the 9N. It's just a lot more wearable in my opinion. They're just colors that are right up my alley. I do have this on right now. I mixed this shade and a little bit of this one and I just feel like this is so versatile. I feel like you get a really good mix of peachy and pink colors. You get matte, you get shimmers, you get deeper colors. I just think this is such a great deal. You get nine blushes and this is so affordable. Under 20 bucks. If you divide that, this is definitely a steal. This is an awesome travel friendly palette. This is an awesome freelancing palette and this is just an awesome palette for anyone who wears blush, which I feel like everyone should wear blush. These blend really nicely. They're creamy. They're not powdery. I do have a 10% off coupon code for Morphe. It is Rosita so it'll make this palette even cheaper so definitely check this out if you haven't. I'm telling you if you wear blush you will love this palette so that one was super inexpensive and this one is expensive this is the Tom Ford skin illuminating powder duo in 01 mood light I purchased this a while ago like when this first was released and you get two shades you get a lighter shade and a more like champagne -y, pinky bronzy shade I wore this two videos ago and everyone was saying that my skin was looking so luminous and so dewy and I really feel like it has to do with this I have both colors mixed on right now and I just think this gives you such a pretty sheen now up close there is shimmer it's not glitter it's more of like a shimmer like a sheen that it gives you and I just think it's so gorgeous you don't have to mix them both but I feel like the perfect color is mixing them both if you're lighter obviously you could just use this one if you're darker you can use this one but I like to just mix them both and I just love the effect that it gives it literally makes my skin look dewy where a lot of highlights won't give you that dewy effect. They'll make your cheeks look shimmery or glittery, but they won't actually give you dew. And this product actually makes me look youthful and healthy and glowy. The texture on these is insane. They're very like gel-like, which I know some people don't like, but if you're familiar with Laura Geller Gilded Honey, it's something like that. It's a gel consistency. It's not powdery at all. And I just love the sheen that it gives. I hope this is still available. If you're into Tom Ford makeup, definitely pick this up. I wish this came in a more golden kind of color, but I don't mind the pinky bronziness that this one gives but if they have a gold one I'm totally gonna get that one again if you're into high-end makeup pick this up if it's still available it's bomb next up I want to give a shout out to the foundation that I've been wearing it is the hourglass foundation right now I have the shade beige so this is the hourglass vanish foundation I'm gonna have a whole review on it I've been wearing it all week and honestly I'm just so in love with it I don't think I've loved the new foundation this much since my L'Oreal Pro Matte Infallible. Like, this is the only foundation that I want to wear right now. And even though it's like 90 plus degrees here in New York, I still want to wear this. So it's a stick foundation, which makes it super easy to apply. You don't need a lot when you use this because it is super concentrated and super pigmented. I don't want to talk about it too much because I'll be talking about it in depth in the review, which will go up this week. But I just wanted to give it a shout out because I've been loving it. At first, I was using shade Nude. And then sands and now I'm using this one which is beige which is what I have on right now and I feel like I can always manipulate a foundation color with my powder but this one so far seems like a pretty good match I like this one and I also like sand and nude I like all three I feel like I can get away with all three which is really weird I have really dry skin I have dry patches I have texture I have enlarged pores this just makes my face look so flawless and it looks like skin which I love and I've been obsessed with the brush that is meant to be paired with the foundation I've never loved the foundation brush this much. I actually like it better than my Kat Von D foundation brush, which I've been liking, but dry skin plus foundation brush usually is a big no-no because it basically over exfoliates your face and it can tend to look patchy and it can be flaky and it just is a hot mess. So normally I don't go for foundation brushes, but these two together is just awesome. Like I can't wait to show you guys it in action. It just looks flawless. You guys have been loving it on Snapchat and I've been wearing this non-stop. Ever since I got it, I've been abusing this. This. Hourglass is a pricey brand, but I'm telling you this is so worth it. You only need a couple of swipes of this and you are good to go. You're looking flawless. I feel like it's a demi matte finish, but I'll talk about it more in the video, but I just wanted to give it a huge shout out because I've been loving this. I want to talk about two concealers that I've been obsessed with. The first one is this one. This is the Tarte Shape Tape Contour Concealer. This is in light medium. This stuff is so amazingly flawless. This is like 
Urban Decay Naked Concealer, but even more flawless, which I didn't even think could be possible, but I love this so much. I love the applicator because it covers so much ground. I love the shade light medium. I love the consistency. I love how long this wears. I love that this is virtually creaseless on me, which is really crazy because I have tons of creases under my eyes. I seriously have been picking this up so much. I'm so happy Tarte came out with this. I don't know what else to say, but you guys have to go out and get this. I've been using that one more than my Pro Longwear, than my Naked Concealer, more than my Maybelline Fit Me. Like, I've been using that one. And then another one that I also have been reaching for a lot is the Too Faced Born This Way. This one is, again, in light medium. I love that these have yellow undertones. This one doesn't have as much coverage as the Tarte one. The Tarte one is pretty good full coverage. The Born This Way is a little bit less when it comes to coverage, but it's very hydrating. So if I feel like I'm having an extremely dry under eye kind of day, then this one always comes through. It has a bunch of great ingredients in it and it just looks very natural. So I want to go for like that natural makeup. This one can be a little bit too much coverage, which I know sounds weird, but you know, when you just want to wear it light, just mascara, powder foundation. I'll use this one, the Too Faced Born This Way. I'm pretty sure this has coconut water in it. It's very hydrating. It's very lightweight. If you are not into crazy, crazy full coverage, get the Too Faced Born This Way one. It's really good. And if you like that full coverage, full glam look, this one is popping. The Urban Decay Naked Concealer is like a no-brainer for me, but I'm so happy that brands are branching out and coming out with concealers. Next up, I want to talk about the Cody Airspun Loose Face Powder. I've used this a lot on my channel. This one is in translucent. This has a very heavy floral scent, and I just love, love, love this. I recently started using it under my eyes, and I'm like, why haven't I been doing this? I always cut my cheeks with this, so I bake underneath my contour with this because I don't know, it just gives it a clean look. But now that I'm using it under my eyes, I'm like, hello, this stuff is bomb. This was kind of introduced to the makeup community by drag queens, which drag queens are freaking popping and flawless. So they know what they're talking about. So I'm so happy that I tried this under my eyes. You guys actually told me to try it under my eyes and I love it, love it, love it. So good. If you can get over the floral scent, which I don't mind the floral scent, then you will love this. Mine is very messy right now, but I love the powder puff that it comes with. It's actually really good to apply powder underneath your contour or to bake with. You just kind of fold it up and you could apply a heavy amount of powder. I use this today to bake under my eye and under my contour and there's no dryness, there's no cakiness, there's no anything. It's so good and it's so cheap. You can find this in the drugstore. It's usually kind of hidden. It's by like the lash section, I feel like, in CVS and in Walgreens but it's there or even in Rite Aid I think even Walmart carries this so get yourself some Cody Airspun you will not regret it it's good. Next up, I want to talk about the Balm Schwing Liner. This is my favorite matte black liner. It's almost as matte as the Makeup Forever matte liner, which is extremely matte. But I prefer the tip on this one. Hey. I love that the handle is long, so it makes it really easy to apply. I typically don't use this to do my wing, but you totally can because it is pretty easy. But I use this after I've applied my lashes to track my liner to make it really black and intense. I feel like when I don't do that, my eyeliner just looks really gray because of the shadows and all that so I always always now go in with a second liner after my lashes to really intensify everything and this one is so good you can find this in some drugstores like Dwayne Reed's here in New York or online or on Holt Look so if you see this pick it up because it's so good bomb swing don't sleep on the bomb I'm so paranoid about my teeth now. For my brows this month, I pretty much only use the Dip Brow Pomade in Ebony. Okay, I know, crazy right? Rose with Ebony, dark brows. But in my last two videos, I only used the Dip Brow Pomade and I used my Zoeva Wing Liner Brush like always. You guys know that's the only brush I'll use basically. But this stuff is so good. When I only use this by itself and I use a really light hand and light strokes, I love how my brows come out. Like they just look so crisp and so clean. I don't know why. I was not using this on its own, but on its own, it's so good. I basically just do the edges and then I'll fill in with whatever's on the brush. Just fill in the inside of my brow. But I also have been enjoying the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil. I have this in number four. So I used both of these today and that's what I have on my brows. This one is comparable, I feel, number four to like medium brown, dark brown from Anastasia, the Brow Wiz. I really like this one because the tip is really really thin and fine and I feel like you get a lot of product in this one I don't have to use that much and it's super creamy and pigmented I feel like even more creamy than the brow wiz so you don't have to be careful you don't want to just go crazy with this because it is so creamy and blendable and 
movable if that makes any sense so it's not as stiff as the brow wiz I still love my brow wiz but I've been using this one and I love the spoolie on this one too because I feel like it blends the product but it doesn't smear it all over and it's just a really nice spoolie random I know and the packaging is just so cute so I've been using these two on my brows I still really like the Urban Decay brow beater I use that occasionally and the L'Oreal brow stylus but this is like the star of the show I really just don't know why I was not using this one. I don't know, but I've been into the darker brow lately. I don't know. I just don't know. As far as lips go, I've been loving regular lipsticks. Crazy, I know. I have three to show you. First one is super high-end. This is the Tom Ford lipstick in Blush Nude. When I first got this, I was a lot more tan, so I wasn't using the shade, so I still have a lot left. But now, I'm just so into this like light pink color in the fall and in the winter i like the more brownie nudes but right now i'm really into the pinky nudes so that's blush nude today i kind of deepened it a little bit by using max soar max soar is super duper on the pink side so i feel like it kind of just switched up the look of the lipstick i wore it the other day with a different lip liner and it looks a lot different so i feel like this is a good lipstick to manipulate the only downside to wearing regular lipstick for me anyway is that it gets on my teeth like i don't know if it's just this one but creamy lipsticks just always seem to get on my teeth no matter how many times i do the thumb trick it just always gets on one tooth and it pisses me off as long as i'm just checking in the mirror every so often i'm good but in my q a video i totally had lipstick on my teeth and I was wearing this blush nude and I didn't do the thumb trick so maybe that's why. Another regular lipstick that I've been loving is Shiseido Hushed Tones and this one is also pinky on the rosy side so this is actually meant to be like a super duper duper light light red. I know that sounds crazy but when I went to a Shiseido event all about red lipstick this one was classified as a red lipstick but it's obviously not red it's more of like a pinky nude. It's a little more rosy than the Tom Ford but I really like this one. I like it on top of any other lipstick to make it a little more rosy. And again, I've just really been into the rosy pinky tones for the summertime. And I love the creamy finish. I just want my lips to look glossy and juicy. It's just a lot more effortless and fast. And it just looks a lot more summertime in my opinion. And the last one I want to show you is this Bite Beauty Amuse lipstick in Honeycomb. So Honeycomb is a little bit more on the brownie nudie side. But I've just been really loving these creamy lipsticks. I feel like they're just so easy to throw in my bag and I just can't be bothered sometimes in the summertime when I just want to wear mascara on a lipstick to like do a liquid lipstick and be all precise and I just don't want that matte finish right now I really like the creamy finish I'm not wearing as many glosses right now but creamy lipsticks are a total favorite of mine right now and my last favorite for the month was this Marc Jacobs Marc Jacobs perfume this stuff smells so good. It's just very clean and fresh. I got this because of Patrick Star. I'm pretty sure this is his favorite perfume. And I just really have been into the clean, fresh smell. I did pick up the YSL Mom Petit one. And it almost makes me nauseous because it's so sweet. I like it, don't get me wrong. But at first, the smell is very, very sweet. And it makes me nauseous. This one hasn't been making me nauseous. A lot of perfumes have just been like not mixing well with my chemistry and they just make my head hurt and they make me kind of like nauseous and dizzy and I just don't like it. But this one smells so clean and so fresh and I just really like it. It's just very clean. It's very classic. I was over here wasting product because it had a sticker on the nozzle and I was so confused. Like I thought I had to take this top part off but it specifically said not to on the sticker. So make sure to remove the sticker. If you like Bulgari Omnia, you'll really like this one because again it's very classic very fresh with a little bit of musk in it so it's still a little sexy but it's more on the clean fresh side without smelling like Dolce Gabbana light blue because I cannot stand light blue I know everyone loves that one and it's so clean and so fresh but I can't stand that so this is like my version of a clean fresh out the shower kind of scent so love that so now I'm going to talk about some disappointing products for the month Kat Von D the concealer and the powder no matter how many times I try this, it just doesn't work for me. The coverage is not what's bothering me about this. It's the fact that it just creases so bad. I've tried this with Laura Mercier. I've tried this with RCMA. I've tried it with the Locket Powder. I've tried setting this with so many different powders. And it just won't stop creasing. And it just always looks really dry and crepey under my eyes. And I'm just not digging it. Like, it looks good on camera. But I have to constantly be, like, pressing my under eye to try to take those creases away. I've tried baking with it. I've tried not baking with it. So I've come to the conclusion it's just not for me. I think this is going to be a great concealer for those who are looking to spot conceal. Because it has great coverage but I just don't think this is a good 
under eye concealer. I do love the contour kit, but her face products besides that are just not working for me. This locket powder, I don't know what it is, but it just looks really dry on me. Like, it just breaks up my foundation. I tried using this on the Hourglass foundation, and I just didn't like how it looked. And I was like, I know it's not the Hourglass foundation because I love that stuff. So, this, I don't know. I don't know if it's because it has glitters in it. I don't know if it's because it's drying it just isn't my favorite powder I don't reach for it and when I bake with it it's just a horror I tried this with like one of my favorite concealers and it made it dry under my eyes I'm not feeling these two sorry Kat Von D I love the contour kit I love the eye palettes amazing amazing the brushes but these two were just a total fail for me not feeling this Another disappointing product for me is one that I don't hate, but I don't love. This is the Glam Glow Mega Illuminating Moisturizer. Now, this smells like creamsicles, like ice cream. It just smells so good, and I've been using it ever since I got it, and I like it because it's illuminating. I mean, it's not that illuminating. It's somewhat illuminating. It's the only illuminating moisturizer that I own, so I guess that's why I feel like, ooh, like it's shiny, but honestly, this doesn't moisturize my skin whatsoever. They basically took moisturizer and they put some shimmer or something like illuminator in it mixed it together and called it an illuminating moisturizer but it has no moisturizing properties I don't know what it is but it's just I'm not in love with this let me know what you guys think if you have it I like it under my makeup because it's not thick and it is illuminating somewhat but I just feel like if I'm gonna use a moisturizer I need it to be moisturizing especially because I have dry skin I love glam glow I love the white mask I've been dying to try the purple mask I had a sample of it and I liked it but I want to actually go ahead and buy it like it's like a lifting tightening one but this was just no bueno for me I don't know it's just sitting there like I use it sometimes but it's not a product that I'm like <gasps> love you know just I'm, I'm iffy about it i'm weird it's weird meh so those were my beauty favorites now i'm gonna show you guys my favorite songs of the month i have a ton of songs i've really been into spanish music so i'm sorry if you don't listen to spanish music but i have a little bit of mix of english and spanish but it's a lot of spanish i'm just warning you right now connected to bruises i for you Wasn't you in the back? Had to skip the line. No, oh, I'ma keep that shit a stack till my fucking time go. Nigga, throw you in the shade cause they wanna shine them. No. Nigga, throw me in the grave in the feral gum. Put you out where I fuck with you. Look at you, look at you, what you made me do. Way too much of confidence. For me and others, who wants to love somebody like me? You wanna love somebody like me? If you can love somebody. Yo verdad que me sorprendí cuando vi que la chante mataba.
kilos. Bite that. Bite that. But only one, hey? Yeah, just no, it's fine. Oh, okay. Tu tiene. Tu 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 that was my mom's ringtone. So that concludes my favorites for this month. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.